Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out important news. With us today, happy to have him back, Anthony Tennyson. He's CEO of Awaken Life Sciences, trades in Canada under AWKN, and for our friends in the U.S., AWKNF. For those who are new to the story, because you're starting to see that psychedelics are starting to play a bigger and bigger role in the small cap markets, what you need to know first, from, from our point of view, is psychedelics are going to go through a parabolic, paradigm-shifting growth phase in the next five years because of their ability to treat anxiety, depression, and specifically in Awaken's case, in the situation, addiction. Uh, so Awaken itself is a biotech company that's developing psychedelic medicine to treat addiction with, and I love this part, clinical operations that allow them to both conduct research and administer treatments at the same time. More than just lip service, they're getting first mover advantage for uh, with clinics in the UK and the EU, 400 million person market there. The first three clinics are opening in 2021. We're gonna talk about that. They're targeting 20 clinics by 2024 uh, and about $100 million in revenue. So that's the clinic side, but they've also got, and this is why I love this company, they got both sides, a strong psychedelic drug development pipeline, specifically targeting addiction, and more than just lip service, they've got the leading research and clinical team in the industry that specifically focus on psychedelics for addiction. Put all that together, you've got multiple scalable revenue streams across drug development and clinical delivery. Let's talk about the last two press releases. Anthony, welcome back, my friend. Hey, great, great to be here again. Great to speak to you and even better to speak to your audience. Uh, happy to take any and all questions. Well, let's start off with, uh, before actually we get to the press releases, because you've got sure. two good ones, um, how are the clinic rollouts looking for the UK? Because you're, you're rolling out three, right, before the end of 2021. Are they on schedule? How's that looking? Yeah, so, so what we have on target is we have targeted to open three revenue generating assets, so three clinics this fiscal year. So those will be Bristol, London, and our recently announced uh, binding agreement to acquire a clinic in Norway. Okay. And then, so that's gonna be the three clinics this fiscal year. And then we've got a full program for opening more clinics, UK, Ireland, and Nordics next year as well. Why are you, you know, there's such a big rush for, the most of the rush for psychedelics clinics we're seeing is in the US, North American market. What's the, what's the reason that you guys are targeting e, uh, UK and EU? And, and how big an advantage do you think you have over other participants in the industry? Yeah, so, so George, that's a great question. Um, so the reason we're targeting the UK and the EU is, is, as you mentioned in your intro, it's a big, big territory. $20 trillion a year in GDP, 400 million people, with 20% of those affected by a mental health issue on an annual basis, and another significant amount, potentially north of 20% of those, percent of those affected by an addiction. So this is a big, big problem in a very large territory that has significant wealth. And not only that, there is much less competition in the UK and the EU. There are only two other standalone clinical operations in the UK. Wow. And they don't do what we do. They don't come at it from a medical psychedelic approach. And there are even fewer in continental Europe. So it really is blue ocean territory for us pushing into with a very, very unique proposition with a very, very strong team, it's a really is a significant opportunity for us to build out that clinics platform that gives us the revenue and the free cash flow to reinvest in a biotech engine of the business. So I've got to presume with, with, with such little competition in the UK, let's talk about the UK for a second, there must be massive lead times uh, in order to get into a clinic, which means I would, you, I, I would expect that your first clinics in the, in the UK, the first two, are probably going to be pretty busy, right? There must be yeah, great demand we, there. Yeah, we, it's about a six to 12 month lead time, George, wow. uh, to open the That's clinic. Too long. But not only that, you've got to acquire the talent and you have to train the talent. And there is a significant shortage of talent in this industry. But a great advantage of us is because we've got the industry leaders in Professor David Nutt and Dr. Ben Sessa and Professor Celia Morgan, we have people asking us to come and work for us. So we believe we've got the best team enables us to open clinics at speed. We've got the best team, we've got the best profile so we can acquire, retain and develop the talent required to deliver those services. 
And we already have, with very, very limited marketing, we have 500 people on the waiting list for our clinic in Bristol, which will be the first clinic that we open in the UK. Um, and then not only that, as we're already beginning the marketing campaign for the London clinic, which will be opening in Q4 this year. So, you know, yeah, we think there's a big opportunity in the UK. There's 10 million people in the greater metropolitan area for London. There's 2 million people in the greater metropolitan area for Bristol. And where we're gonna open our third clinic in the UK in Manchester, there's actually about 5 million people in the greater metropolitan area of Manchester and Liverpool. So these are big, high density population areas with significant uh, wealth and disposable income. So yeah, we, we think we're onto a pretty good business model with our clinics in the UK. And what and that and that sounds look, it's it's a shame that there are so many people who need the help, but it's great that they're gonna get it. Um, why are you guys specific specifically focusing on addiction? Because there's so many psychedelics can go everywhere, right? Anxiety, depression. Why addiction? And and what kinds of addiction are you limiting yourselves? Or is it just all kinds of addiction? And obviously it's a major problem in the world. Yeah, so another great question. Thank you very much. Um, so why are we focused on addiction? Um, addiction is the biggest single unmet medical need of modern times. Anywhere up to 20% of the global adult population suffers from a substance addiction. So that is opioids, prescription drugs, illicit drugs, alcohol, or tobacco. Another significant minority of the population suffer from behavioral addictions like gambling addiction, compulsive sexual behavior, which includes pornography, internet gaming, or binge eating disorders. And these are debilitating conditions that have significant negative impacts on individuals, their families, and their communities. But not only are these debilitating conditions, the treatments are currently subpar is the politest way I can be. I can speak about it. If you take alcohol use disorder, yeah. for example, that affects 5% of the global population, only 16% of people who suffer from that condition seek treatment. And the reason for that is there is a 75% failure rate with treatments for alcohol use disorder in the first 12 months. Just look so at all the stories we hear from Hollywood or you know, all the A-list a celebrities, typically alcohol, people addicted to alcohol or, or you know, drugs and things always relapse, seems like they're always relapsing and that it, there's a real need for this. Cor that is cor cor correct. So there's a big, big problem that has a significant negative impact on the individuals and their families. The current treatments are poor. We're focused on that because it's the bloody right thing to do, right? We know that psychedelics can be more effective at treating substance addictions like alcohol, tobacco, and opioid, and behavioral addictions like gambling, sex, compulsive sexual behavior, and binge eating disorder. And why do I know that? It's because we've acquired the teams and the IP and the assets from clinical trials that have proven and will prove that psychedelics can be more effective at treating substance addictions than anything else. We acquired the team and the IP and the data from the world's only trial for MDMA to treat alcohol use disorder. It's a phase 2A trial. We're bringing that forward into phase 2B. We've acquired the team and the IP from the world's only trial for ketamine for alcohol use disorder. That was a phase 2B trial, and that's due to be published in the next couple of weeks. You know, the industry is waiting for Compass to publish the results of their phase 2B trial. We believe we'll be publishing a phase 2B trial in the same time frame as they will. So really importantly, and those trials prove psychedelic assisted psychotherapy is more effective than anything else currently available for treating substance addictions. If the, failure, that, if the failure relapse rate is 75%, which is shocking, I didn't think it was that high, What, which implies, I guess, a success rate of 25%. Uh, what do the numbers, is it too early, but, or what do the numbers look like for, the, for addiction being treated by psychedelics in terms of failure and or success rate? Yeah, so, so the one that's been published, the phase 2A trial has been published, so I can speak to the results of that. It was a small trial, the safety and tolerability study, but there was some efficacy coming out of it. And that showed a 30 to 20% relapse at the six and nine month measurement windows. So you're looking at an 70 to 80% success rate yeah. with treatment for um, physically addicted people suffering from alcohol use disorder. The ketamine trial, the results haven't been published yet, they will be published in the American Journal of Psychiatry in the coming weeks, and they will prove quite promising. And I'd love to come back on here with Celia Morgan, that was a principal investigator for the trial, and share with your audience the actual results from that trial, which will be 
quite impressive. Yeah, I think, and uh, 100%, let's write that down, timestamp it, because, you know, both investors and investors are people, right? Either we suffer from these things or we know people suffer from these things. So I still think we're in that heavy education phase. It'd be great to have the two of you back on uh, to discuss it. But I love the fact that the early numbers uh, uh, on the one on the one study you talked about essentially flip it. It's taken from a seventy five percent you know failure rate to a seventy five percent success rate. Uh, but not only that, that's not only what we're doing. So we're developing a therapeutics package to treat addiction, so substance and behavioral addictions. So we're working right now at clinical stage research with ketamine and MDMA. So we're in phase two, two B and moving forward for beyond for ketamine uh, and same for MDMA to develop the therapies. But we're also, George, we're developing our own drugs as well. We're active in preclinical stage research. We've partnered with one of the world's largest drug discovery companies. And in our publicly stated milestones, we'll have results from the first part of that program coming out in early Q4. But as you said, that's just what we're doing on development to develop a world beating IP commercial platform or portfolio to better treat this most significant medical need of modern times. But we also have near-term revenue. We've got revenue starting this yeah. fiscal year from clinics, three clinics this fiscal year, ultimately speaking of 20 clinics by the end of 2024. Each clinic can generate about 4 million sterling. So that's an 80 million sterling run rate at steady state at the end of 2024. But not only that, we'll also have, we're also building up a licensing partnerships business that gives us the ability to access the North American market as well. So we've acquired the IP from that ketamine trial. It's a proven method, method of use that's been proven in a clinical trial, how ketamine can be more effective at treating alcohol use disorder. We're gonna license that into the North American market. George, there's 125,000 addiction treatment practitioners in the US treating people with alcohol use disorder with a failure rate of 75%. Yeah, they're, they're struggling. I mean, they're them. desperate for something because it's, yeah, they're, they're desperate for something to come along and turn because they're professionals at the end of the day, they're practitioners. They want to see George get better. And it's, it's got to be just killing them that they can't, you know, they, they can only get you know, two and a half out of 10 Georges better at the end of the day. Absolutely. So we've got a really rock solid IP portfolio active across preclinical and clinical stage research. We've got one rent revenue stream starting this fiscal year and another revenue stream starting next fiscal year. And the revenue streams are next, next fiscal year, the licensing partnerships business, that's pretty scalable because we're going into the North American market. So really, we think we're at just the beginning of what is a very, very exciting journey for this company. So last question to you on uh, talking to shareholders, potential investors who are trying to do their diligence, due diligence and trying to get the research done to separate you know, the, the pretenders from, from, from the real companies. Is that differentiator, how big of a differentiator is that you have the clinics and the drug development at the same time? And you can do the research inside the clinics. You can do the trials inside the clinics. How big and how powerful of a differentiator is that for Awaken? It's a significant uh, differentiator because it ain't one of the key things is being able to run the research in our own infrastructure ensures that our team will be the most advanced and most knowledgeable team in the industry when it comes to deploying these in, in the clinic after marketing authorization. Also helps massively from a talent acquisition, talent retention and talent development basis. But really it's, it's the running across development and delivery. It's the key differentiator for us is biotech business with massive potential and near-term revenue streams. And then really for the message for your audience is we're just at the beginning. We've got significant catalyst type events coming down the track over the next couple of months. We've got the publication of that phase 2B trial coming out in the next couple of weeks. And these are all in our publicly stated milestones, so not speaking out of school here. Yeah. But we got the publication of the phase 2B results from that clinical trial that we own the IP from. We've got the opening of our first clinic in the UK, which is the first medical psychedelic clinic to be opened in the UK. We've got another clinic to be opened in the UK this calendar year. We got to close the acquisition for the leading clinic of its kind in Norway. We've got the publication of the first stage of our drug discovery program with Evotech, the world's largest drug discovery company. And we've also got the fact that we're going to be submitting a clinical trial application for ethics and regulatory approval for a phase 2B MDMA trial. And there's a lot of other stuff we're doing as well. So we've got significant milestones coming down the track that I believe will position us in the leading pack of this industry. But not only that, we've got the best team, 
really strong assets and near-term revenue. So separating the wheat from the chaff, I'd like to believe that we're, the, we're, we're in the wheat bucket at, at the end of the day. And, the, and I thank you for that summary because look, I know that you guys at Awaken are driven first by the patients and getting people well, I know that, but it's great as shareholders and people watching to know near-term revenues and then more coming behind that with the clinical studies and development of the drugs. And it just seems like the company is going to be powerful for the next three, four years. Can't wait to have you back on a couple of weeks after that study is published, because I do think it's important to educate people and, uh, and really get them to understand the science in order to convert them both into, you know, into people who go seek the help because they can believe in it at the same time, become investors because they believe in what you're doing. Thanks so much for joining us today. Can't wait to have you back, my friend. Cheers. Take care. Good to speak to you and your audience again. Thank you very much. For everybody at home, you've been watching Anthony Tennyson, CEO of Awaken Life Sciences, trades on the on Canada under AWKN in the US, AWKNF. To do your research and due diligence, get to Agoracom, go to the company's profile page, great overview, and then you can see it right over Anthony's head there, awakenlifesciences.com, to do your deep dive due diligence. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time. Thank you. Hey guys, this video is over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our channel and never missing another great Agoracom small cap video.